just accompanied Flesh and the Devil, which is the third film I've accompanied today. So I'm a little bit wrecked because um, all, f all three films were quite intense and unrelenting. <laughs> um, but uh, it seemed to go down very well with the audience, so I'm quite happy. I mainly accompany films and I also accompany dance and I accompany singers. So I do very little um, music that stands alone. Um, although I've done that in the past, um, but I'm, I'm not, you know, I don't, I don't do classical concert performances or whatever. Um, it's, it's just a very, it's a completely different sort of skill really. You are quite subservient to the main feature, but um, it's, it's very challenging in its own way. I started playing piano when I was seven, so I've been playing for a few decades now. <laughs> um, and I started off as, well, I was classically trained and um, probably initially it looked as though I would go down a conventional classical uh, path, some, in some way or another, playing in orchestras or whatever. Um, the playing for silent movies was really just a happy accident, really. Um, I was asked to accompany a silent film by an old school teacher um, who used to run film societies and she knew that I played piano and she just said, would you be able to try improvising for a silent film? So I did and thought it was fantastic. And then I moved to London and I was looking for ways to make a living. And I noticed that there are some, that, that were s cinemas that showed silent films. So I sent my CV to all of them saying how experienced I was playing for silent films, armed with my one screening. And uh, I didn't hear anything and after about six months I got an audition at the National Film Theatre, which is now called BFI Southwick. Um, and uh, obviously I passed because I've been doing it for 20 years now. <laughs> So, yeah, but a very happy accident. I, I'd always loved film. And I had, at university when I was studying music, I probably spent more time in the cinema than in, you know, going to concerts. So, um, and I had seen a couple of silent films at university, but I hadn't ever made any kind of connection to music making. Um, but maybe, you know, in retrospect, you know, the paths were converging. <laughs> at some, you know, in the future. There's a lot in common between accompanying dance and accompanying films. Um, and one of the interesting things, um, I play at the Pordenone Silent Film Festival in Italy, and um, there's a sort of team, I'm one of a team of about seven pianists, and I think all of the pianists there have played for dance at some point, and about half of us do it on a regular basis. So I think it's, it's got to be more than a coincidence. I, I, I mean, I accompany dance in a very visual way. I don't think I really am particularly knowledgeable about ballet, especially, or contemporary dance. Um, but I, I do it in a very visual way. And, um, and I think film and dance, that they kind of help each other. I, I think the two feed into each other in a way that's quite hard to describe. But it's, it's all about I mean, it very specifically with dance, you, have, you know, it's about hitting the rhythm of the dance, but in a way, it's about hitting the rhythm of film as well, in a slightly more abstract way. But films, the best, good films tend to have a rhythm of some kind, even if it's slow or fast, and the music has to, uh, has to find that rhythm. I actually had this experience recently in America. I was... Um, playing for a film called, the, well, it's the, the Battle of the Somme film, the original uh, film that was released uh, to document the battle in the First World War. And um, for that film, I've been playing the orig original score as opposed to my own music. So it's very much the exception for me. But um, at this particular, we, we, we recently um, made a DVD of the film um, with the Imperial War Museum in London. And uh, there are two scores on the DVD, the one that I'm involved in, the original score, um, and a new contemporary orchestral score written by a young composer. And what we decided to do uh, was to show the entire film, but to start off with, for the first part of the film, to show it with the contemporary orchestral score. 
the second part to show it with the original score that I was playing along with the quartet, but, but the soundtrack from the DVD. And then from the third part to the end, I did a solo piano accompaniment live of the rest of the original score. And everyone in the audience said that the moment it became live, it came alive for them in a way that they hadn't found, even though they appreciated the qualities of the other two, of the recorded scores, including the contemporary score, which is very beautiful. But somehow the, um, the fact that it was like sitting in a cinema with a soundtrack coming through the cinema speakers made th they felt a distance to the film, which somehow was um, rubbed out when I started playing live. And they, everyone said they be started to engage with the film, which is quite an, ali it's quite an alien f alienating film for us now because it's so um, jingoistic and it's so distant from our experience now. What I normally do, which is an improvised score or a semi-improvised score, um, I think you, even if you forget about the music, which you should do, um, you're still kind of at some level aware that you're hearing someone interpreting the film in the moment. And I think maybe it's that kind of subconscious awareness of Im interpretation that's going on at that moment during the screening. So you, I think you know that that screening will be completely different from any other screening. Um, whereas when it's a recorded soundtrack, that's fixed and it will always be the same. So the experience is always the same with the soundtrack and it's never quite the same with a live accompaniment. That was a long answer. <laughs>